My name is Michael Simmons and I'm from Bloomington, Indiana. Back in the uh, 1970s, the early 70s, I was doing field work in southern Indiana, collecting folklore and monitoring uh, log construction in the area, and I came across by accident an old log farmstead. There were five log buildings dating back to the 19th century, and so I stopped to look at the buildings, and I met uh, the owner. She was uh, of German extraction. Her family had come there in the 1840s to ex escape the wars that were going on in Germany, and she was living on a farm that her grandfather had constructed, and she was uh, planting three large truck gardens, had a hen house, and uh, leased out the rest of the 500 acres for uh, corn production. But she invited me into the house and we were uh, talking and I noticed that she had a wood stove that she was still using. And she pointed out that her children had given her a new electric range, uh, which she also pointed out in the corner. And she had embroidered a cloth to cover the electric range with so that it wouldn't get dirty. But she said she never really got used to it and liked to use the wood stove. So she baked an amazing array of things in this, uh, in this old wood stove, including all these German pastries. Every weekend she made donuts. And, uh, and all of her baking she did in the oven. And she monitored the heat by feeling it. And then she used a corn cob in the door and raised and lowered the corn cob in the door to adjust the temperature to get her baking right. So she was a pretty accomplished baker, and she, uh, finding out that I was interested in food, took me down into the basement, into the root cellar, <clears throat> and she had uh, just row upon row of glass jars filled with all of the produce from her garden that she'd canned, um, beans and tomatoes and every sort of vegetable you could imagine, all put up and very carefully labeled. Uh, she had. Um, crocks of uh, coleslaw that we're making in the basement and uh, then she said I should really see her hams that were curing in the attic so I had to crawl up in the attic and she had five or six large hams hanging and she said she smoked them herself so she took me out to the smokehouse and she kept a slow fire going that was uh, made of hickory, maple and sassafras wood and it was her own combination of, of smoking wood that she used to smoke her hams and preserve them in the, uh, in the attic. She, had, uh, she grew crops from heirloom seeds and she even was still growing some tobacco that was a unique variety that her husband had liked. Uh, he had died a number of years before, but she kept growing it sort of in his memory, but she had found that she could use it in the uh, nest of her laying chickens because it kept the uh, mites away from the chickens. So she would crumble up the tobacco and sprinkle it in the uh, in the chicken nest to keep the mites out. <clears throat> so she had a complete uh, self-sustainable operation going there and uh, between her gardening and canning and preserving and smoking uh, and her cooking she was uh, just a one-woman uh, farm and uh, it was uh, pretty amazing that she, at, in her 80s, could uh, keep up this level of food production that she did. But uh, everyone in the community agreed that she was, she was uh, an amazing woman. And uh, her recreation was to uh, go out uh, to the fairgrounds uh, once a week to play Sheep's Head, which is a German card game with her friends. But her main uh, enterprise seemed to be keeping the farm going and, uh, and cooking for her grandchildren. She said that in the um, summertime, when they had help on the farm, that they would always have uh, whiskey available for the uh, farmhands to have with their noon meal. Uh, in the fall, they had wine, but they found that if they gave them the wine in the summertime, it made them sleepy. So they switched to whiskey. She had a refrigerator, but she kept a lot of things in the cellar where things stayed cooler, and that's where she made her coleslaw. Now, it's pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. She still repaired the roofs of the buildings, too. And
In fact, that was her undoing. She, uh, on a frosty morning, she was on the roof and she uh, fell off, slipped on the frost and broke her arm. So she had to move in with her son after that. Mm -hmm.